hey there. Thanks for joining me on this tutorial of getting your project onto a DVD or some sort of, you know, media where you can play it. This will also include just rendering it out if you want to put it on YouTube or wherever you may. But I'm going to take it the additional step to have it on a DVD. Maybe you've created your project already and you've even rendered it, but don't know how to get it to this DVD point. I am going to be using DVD Architect and it's typically bundled right along with Sony Vegas. So if you don't have it, maybe this is not the tutorial for you to be watching. Okay, so let's get started. I already have imported my clips. If you do not know how to do that, um, first off, I went to my media bin. I am going to create a new bin. I did raw. I go to the folder icon where I'm going to import my media. I've looked for my media. I've said OK. I've imported it onto my timeline. Now, Sony Vegas has already set up my project properties for me because I'm only really working with one clip. Now, this is standard definition. I shot this a while ago, um, but maybe you may have mixed media, HD and standard definition. Then I suppose I would bring in my highest quality video first and then just have it set properties to that. If you're not quite sure, you can always come down, bring your media into your timeline, right click, save properties, go over to general, 720 by 480 by 24 dB. So if this was HD footage, all this stuff is going to be different. Okay, so once you have your footage in there, you know, I'm not going to really go over the basics of editing because that is not why we're here. So on your timeline here, you would go to the beginning of your clip, wherever it's at, and mark I for in on your keyboard shortcut. Go to the end of actually just this clip. I'm going to say O for out. And then right here, you can see that I have this region highlighted. Now, I can double click on it and just have this portion selected. Now, normally, I mean, I would have faded up from black and all that kind of stuff. I would never take a clip like this, typically. But there are some scenarios maybe you would want to render a clip like this. You can just double click on the clip itself and it will highlight in and out. So you could do it this way. If somebody needed a new format, uh, maybe... You know, they have uh, a need WMVs and their MOVs. Maybe they are shot off of the cell phone and they want to have it on a playable DVD. You know, all this kind of stuff. Like I said, you would just right click and then you could check your properties. That's going to aid you when you're rendering it. So, okay, now you just go up to this little render as icon. Let's say that you do not have this render as icon on your toolbar. So you would just go up to file and just say render as and then now this window pops up and it gives you your options of where you want to save your video and what you want to name it. And it's best to have proper file management right from the get-go because, oh, test DVD, and then maybe I'll be like test DVD 1, test DVD 2, test DVD 3. I know that's not the best way, but at least you know a progression. I personally do that because sometimes I don't want to override my project. Uh, maybe I want to go back and revert it. Um, Sony Vegas, I'm sure there's some other ways to go back and open up an older file like Premiere does, but um, I just do it this way. So now you would just say save, and here's all your settings. You could just click on this and then see what kind of options does it give me. It gives me an AVI. It says that it's NTSC DVD, DV, pardon me. And that is exactly what my clip is. So I could do that if I'm going to be making a DVD. Let's talk a moment about different file types in making a DVD. Now, this video here is 2 minutes and 31 seconds. I know that that is going to fit uncompressed or compressed onto a DVD. So it really doesn't matter. I could do an AVI. I uncheck this or I can do an MPEG-2. Now MPEG-2 
And you can see that right here, you have all your different options. And down here, M to T, S, those options are different. So make sure that you are in just the main concept, MPEG-2 option here. If you're HD, you can still do this if you're going to burn a standard definition DVD. If you're going to burn a Blu-ray, then this is, once again, not the proper tutorial. This is just for standard definition DVD burning. You can have an HD video that goes in there, but it's still standard definition, really, no matter how you look at it. You would just go widescreen video stream, or you would just say NTSC video stream, meaning 4.3, old school 4.3 footage square box. Vegas and Architect are bundled together, so therefore it just makes it really easy to choose one of these options when you are creating a video. So if it's widescreen, choose this option. If it's not widescreen, choose this option right here. NTSC is America. Uh, PAL is for some overseas countries. So, you know, just refer to your map if you are overseas for this video. NTSC may not be for you. Okay, so then you would just simply render it out. Renders out your DVD here, MPEG. Mm, I will actually be back in the moment when this is ready. So once it's done, this folder will pop up and you can have this check close, this dialog box when rendering completes. But I personally don't like that because oftentimes, oops, I forgot where I put it or whatever the case may be. And I'll just say open folder and then it makes life easy. You can preview your video just right out of your folder. So my video is rendered here. Okay, I need to go back. When rendering as I was saying about AVI and MPEG. Now, because my video was short, I know that I could make a compressed version and fit it onto a DVD. That means if I had a two hour long video, I could compress it down to a format that a DVD understands, an MPEG. So the MPEG is just compressed, or I could do, let's say an AVI, or an MOV. Now, if my video is two hours long, and I cannot really ex give you the whys of how this works. I just do it, and I know it works. But that if you take an AVI, and it's big and uncompressed, and maybe like 10 gigs, then you can take it into DVD Architect, and it uses its own compression software to smash it down to fit onto a DVD. Now, Sony Vegas is bundled with DVD Architect. So what I had done going under DVD Architect video stream, it's already giving the, you know, the codex or the compression is going to work in tandem. So when you open it up in DVD Architect, if you've rendered out an MPEG, two-hour MPEG, there could be a possibility now, though. You cannot shrink it down. You cannot scale to fit your DVD. You're going to have to render it all over again. So if you had any question at all, is it an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half? That's about the max. Just, you know, if you have any questions, just render it as an AVI or an HD. It's going to be a different format. If you're in HD, then I typically am using, you know, one of these Sony's because that's, you know, where I'm at. ABC HD 1440 I used to use, 1920, one of these Blu-rays. It doesn't matter. So if you are doing HD footage, you'll want to render it this way, even though you're not putting it on a Blu-ray. It's going it, to keep the quality on your DVD high. I hope this isn't confusing. I feel like it may be a bit confusing. I totally apologize. Just in short, if your video is like over an hour and 20 minutes, then just go big. If it's under, you know, 45 minutes and under, then you can render an MPEG. It's easily going to fit on your small or, you know, whatever 0.7 gigabytes of space. Okay. So my video is now rendered. There it is. I am going to 
open my DVD Architect. So I'm going to open DVD Architect and you can say File and New and Menu-based, Single Movie, it depends. Do you have one movie that wants you want it to be looped? Maybe it's a slideshow for a wedding, a montage. Maybe it's for a trade show. If that's the case, then make a single movie. I'm going to go over that first. You can drop down. Is it 16.9? Like we said earlier, did you render it out widescreen or did you render it out just standard 4.3? Mine is 4.3, so I would just, you know, keep it the way it is. So now it wants to find the media and you just find your location and say yes. Okay, I do not have any black on this video, so it, it doesn't have any. But if you fade it up from black in your render um, in Vegas, which you should have done, then this would be black. So like fade up, into your title, all that kind of stuff. And really all you have to do is come over to the end action and hit See, it is on link, and so you would think like, oh, that's going to be me. It's going to work. No, you have to give it a destination. Link to what? Link to the last page that you looked at. It just So you have to loop them together in that way. And here is my track media. Here's my video, and I didn't have any audio. If I did, it would have came along with it because the video stream takes both audio and video and then you can drop down and replace it or remove or whatever it may be. You can preview and go back up and then you from this point pop a DVD into your drive My suggestion is if you're really playing around with this for the first time and experimenting and you have an hour long video, don't render out an hour long video. Render out five minutes max, really. That is really all you need. And then render out the small part, take it into DVD Architect, bring it in, play around with however it is, and burn like just a small test because you burn out an hour, you waste so much time. You've, uh, you burn out three minutes, five minutes, it's only going to be like an hour, you know, or something's worth of your time. Okay, so I pop in my DVD, and from here I am going to say make DVD. Now, the options here, if you didn't have a DVD and you needed to go buy some, or you don't have a DVD burner, or whatever it may be, you can go to prepare. It will walk you through these same steps. Besides burn, takes you additional steps to actually burning. So you could postpone your burn and use prepare. Right master, I am not going to go over that. So I'm going to burn my current project. I'm going to find a location where I want my DVD to be at. I'm going once I find that I'm going to make a new DVD and I always say you know um, I always label it DVD architect in the beginning so when I'm looking through my folders I can you know when I need to delete stuff or I need space it's easy to identify which is the folder that is actually holding my DVD that being said is you could go to previous prepared folder, find that location, and make additional copies that way. Current project, next. Okay, so here is, you know, some messages and maybe it's red or whatever. You just have to really look right here. 3% of 4.7 gigabytes on the media, which is my DVD, and I'm like well within the space. What is yours say? 110%. Now, if you've if you've rendered your AVI or other uncompressed options, then you'll be able to come over to this option and say fit to disk. I don't need to do that. There's already enough space on here. But let's say that you had like this two, three hour MPEG. You try to put it in there. You try to say fit to disk. It is not going to allow you. It doesn't allow you to smash it down. I do not know why. That's the whole, I don't know why. Um, I just do. So, 
you would just say fit to disk, continue to OK, and then you just hit Next. There are no messages to display. And now you go into your burn, you know, parameters. So you can call it whatever you want to. You can say eject disk when done. So you just put your title and then you would just say finish. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to waste a DVD. So anyhow, from there, that would be it. You would wait, wait, wait. DVD pops out. Go take it to your DVD player and test it. That's what I do. Okay, now let's go over really quickly the menu base. So if you wanted to say DVD and to do that you can just hit F2 or you can right click and you can say edit text or you can come over here and say edit text or you can just delete this all together. I'm going to leave it. Over here you have some background, some themes, some whatever. You can import your own background. Background media, go over to JPEG. You can replace it with whatever you would want. A still image, a video, it doesn't matter. The video you have to fit within the parameters of the menu screen and I actually have made it a tutorial on creating a menu page so I'm not going to go over any more of that. You would just right click insert media, find your media, say okay, here it is. You can right click on it, go to your button style, maybe you just want text only, maybe you want image only, whatever, maybe you want both. Now this is not one of those cute little moving icon. It is just like a still static shot, but you know, it is what it is. So from there, you could just go into the same exact thing. It's just identical steps. This is just with the menu page and then the other is not. Okay, well, I have taken up enough of your time. I hope that you really can enjoy this. If you have any feedback, just let me know. I know it seems confusing, but stick with it, and you're definitely going to be making DVDs before you know it. So thanks for watching.